Welcome to this episode of Just One Thing. Today I'm going to give you an overview of Windows Azure roles. My name is Adam Gerholsky and I'm a technical evangelist with RBA Consulting. So first let's talk about defining what roles are. So roles are defined in a service model and a service model really kind of defines the overall shape of your service or solution that you'll have running in, in Azure. You can define one or more roles per service. Currently, there is a limitation of five roles per service. There's been talk about changing that or increasing that, but nothing's been committed to yet. But currently, you do have a limitation of five. The roles themselves, which are part of the service model, have their own definition. And these definitions um, define the size of the VM they'll be running on, any communication endpoints you need, um, local storage resources, uh, etc. So just a number of things that you can specify for each role that's part of the overall service model. At runtime each role executes on what's called an instance and we'll talk a little bit about instances here and, and in the next slide but an instance is nothing more than just a set of code and configuration any local data required that gets deployed to a dedicated VM. So in terms of instance, um, an instance is nothing more than really the physical implementation of a role template. A, a great way to kind of think about this um, outside of Azure, I'm assuming uh, most anyone who's paying attention to this is uh, C Sharp, maybe VB developer, but you're used to object-oriented programming. So a way to think of it is a role is kind of your class definition, you know, public class, my awesome class. The instances are instantiations. So as you go throughout your code and you need to use that class, you instantiate them at various points along the way. That's what an instance is. An instance is really just kind of the physical implementation of a role, and that happens to be running in its own dedicated VM. And that's important to note, too, in the Azure environment, you're not sharing VMs with anybody else. You have your own dedicated VM. Instances can be of different sizes, um, and we'll talk about. I'll talk about sizing here when I talk briefly about pricing. I won't dwell on it too long. But the important thing to note is that all instances of a specific role or a given role must be the same size. I can have two roles, and those two roles can have different size VMs. But the instances within the role have to have all this, all the same size VMs. You can't, you can't differentiate. You also can't change instance size on the fly. So. Say I have a website and currently it's running on what's known as the small instance and I have a lot of traffic and I want to increase that to a medium or even a large instance. I can't just do that and keep it up and running. The instance is actually have to come down and get spun up as new VMs uh, with the new size. So an important thing to note there, if you're going to upgrade your size, think about the potential impacts uh, on your users as you do that. Role types, so we've talked about what roles are and what their instances are. Let's talk a little bit about the types. There are three types of roles uh, in Azure. First is the web role, and this is a role hosted on IIS. You can use it to host uh, websites, web services, etc. You also have a worker role, where the role is actually an executable. Uh, you can host your own web servers, databases, but really think the, um, if you developed Windows services in the past, kind of make that same, make that analogy with the worker role. That's really what that is. And then you have a VM role, which is um, the role itself is the actual virtual machine. So you can create custom Windows Server 2008 R2 images and upload that as a role. Important thing to note here is that if you go this route, you're almost, almost going down the infrastructure as a service route because uh, in the VM role, you are responsible for both configuring and maintaining the OS. That means putting security patches on, you know, any type of updates you want to put on there, you are responsible for that. You don't get the some of the benefits of Windows Azure if you go with the VM role. One way to kind of visualize these different roles um, is in terms of abstraction and control or kind of what you allow Azure to manage and what you manage yourself is looking at this little continuum here. If I just do web and worker role, by default, Windows Azure manages most everything for me. I can then actually specify I want admin access to those web and worker roles where I can configure them myself um, within certain limits. Um, but I can script out, you know, IIS, how that's running. I can install different applications in my roles if I need to, etc. So I can do that via admin access, but then I'm taking a little more control. So I have to start thinking about that a little bit more, how I'm going to maintain those roles uh, moving forward. And then finally, in the VM role, I, I basically have complete control with some restrictions. Um, but that means that while I have complete control of what's running in the cloud, I also have a lot of responsibility, especially around patching and maintaining the operating system itself. 
So, and I'll have future episodes of Just One Thing where I talk about each of these roles in detail, so I won't spend too much more time on them here. The last thing I do want to talk about, though, before kind of showing some of these roles in action is pricing. Um, and particularly, it's not so much the price, even though it's important, but to understand kind of the different sizes and what you get with them. So you'll see here you have size extra small to extra large. And yes, those are the actual names of the sizes of instances you can you can purchase. And you'll see here it goes anywhere from a shared core all the way up to eight cores. And I mean, you see the CPU speed and the memory as well. Um, obviously, as you kind of go from extra small to extra large, you get more and more and more. And then the, the real important thing to call out here is the cost. And the cost is an hourly cost. So it's per hour. And that it's per hour. And it sh should also be noted, it's per instance. So let's say I have a single web role, and I want to have two instances. So I want to have two virtual machines running this web role for me. What that means is that if I'm running a small instance, that means it's costing me 12 cents an hour times two or 24 cents per hour. Now that, that cost is, is, a, is a pure hourly cost. It has nothing to do with how busy or idle the machines are. If, if the machine is thrashing or if it's at like zero utilization, doesn't matter. I'm getting cost or charged 12 cents an hour. And that's because when I spin up an instance, I have a reserved virtual machine running in a data center somewhere. Whether or not I'm using it doesn't matter. I'm taking up space somewhere on, on a disk, somewhere on hardware that I can have my own instance. So that, that's why it's an hourly cost. But as soon as I shut it down, I, I don't pay anymore. So if I just run that website with those two instances for an hour, I only pay, it only costs me 24 cents, not, not a dime more. So just some important things to note around pricing. So let's actually take a look at how we create some of these different roles uh, in Visual Studio. We'll get out of, out of PowerPoint for a minute and come into Visual Studio. So what I have here is just blank Visual Studio solution. And we'll create a new project. So I'll file new project. And I'll select cloud and I'll just do a Windows Azure project. I'm on project 11 now. Isn't that great? Click OK. And what comes up so I can add some roles? I can add a web role. I can add an MVC2 role, WCF web role, worker role, CGI web role if I want to do PHP or a Silverlight role. Let's just add a couple. I'll add an ASP.NET web role and I'll add a worker role. And we'll see what we get here. Now you'll notice I can't add a VM role um, from this dialog, but I'll show you how to do that if you need to do a VM role. Say my worker role, give them a couple names, and let let the projects get created in Visual Studio. So you'll see I actually have three projects that get spun up here. One is a web role, so that's my website, my ASP.NET website. This is my, oh, I called it my worker roles, but here's my worker role. You'll see there's not much to it other than just a basic class here and a little configuration. And then I have obviously my Windows Azure project. And this contains the service definition. You'll see here my service definition. And go in and click properties here. Not a whole lot for, for this itself, but I can actually go through. If I want to update the service definition, you'll see it's nothing more than just XML. If I wanted to modify it, I certainly could. But I can also modify kind of the role definition. So let's take a look at my web role. First of all, I can specify if I want it to run in .NET, uh, or the trust level of .NET, I should say, full trust or partial. Now, the other thing to note here is instance count. So I can modify this to say, hey, I want two instances running. And then I'll use a small VM size. I can go anywhere from extra large to extra small, of course. And there's a number of other configuration options. Important thing to note here when you're developing locally, and say you have a solution that has multiple roles in it, you really need to think about that when you run that solution on your machine and the hardware that you're running on. For instance, this, this laptop I have, it's a pretty decent machine, but if I specified, you know, up to, you know, two instances here, this web role and another two of my worker role, odds are my machine's going to slow down because essentially I need to emulate four VMs running locally on my machine to simulate what would actually be running in the cloud. So a lot of times for local and development, it's often good just to keep the instance count at one. And that way things are, are a bit speedier when you're going through debugging and testing on your local dev machines. So similarly, I can go through and I can make modifications for the worker role as well. Uh, I'll keep it at small and my VM size. And my instance count, I should say, is one. Now, the one thing I couldn't do um, when I created the project was add a VM role. Uh, to, to add VM roles, I actually need to right-click on this roles folder here of my Azure project and click add. And I could add a new web role or I could add a worker role. 
or I can add a new virtual machine role. So what happens here, um, there's some configuration you need to do. If you have some development accounts created, you can up in up in the Azure portal, you can go and select one of those accounts if you want to. And then once you do that, um, if you look at the Windows Azure portal, you actually, before you can do anything else here, you need to upload a VHE that you've created. Once you've uploaded it uh, from Azure Storage, you can select the VHD here, and that way you can actually have a VM role running uh, on your local machine. So keep in mind, though, that you will have performance impacts running locally as well. But that's how you add the VM role to this solution. Now, when you run it, so we'll just we'll just run this very quickly. We'll just use these two roles. I don't want to use a VM role for this. But what happens here is, is it spins up. So I have my emulator down here. And I'll actually show the compute emulator UI. So I can see my deployments running on here. So I've got my web role. I have one instance and my worker role. I have one instance as well. And you'll see I get a whole bunch of different diagnostic trace information, etc. And I can tear these down. I can modify these. I can stop them at any point in time, etc. So now you'll notice my machine is starting to run slower. I've got kind of two VMs running on top of my of my base OS already. If I add more instances, it will definitely get slower. So be very cautious of that. I've seen people try to get excited about running multiple instances on their machine only to get frustrated because it's so slow. So let's just stop this. There we go. It stops. So it'll tear down all the instances that are running. So now my machine will get a little bit, bit snappier here. You'll see they're actually kind of tearing down at the moment. can take a little while. There we go. And it's all cleaned up. So that's really, I mean, creating roles, very simple to do. As I said, we'll, we'll have um, future versions of just one thing focused on the different roles themselves. So that's it. Um, hopefully, um, just I know it's a high level overview of roles, but at least it kind of gets the concepts of what's a role and what's an instance and kind of how you configure them and how the how they're priced. Um, so provide some overview information in the next few episodes. We'll focus on each role in particular so you can get some more details and, and dive a little bit deeper into them.